Good morning, everybody. Welcome to another video. I am down at the lovely River Wye this morning for a day down here with my mate Mick. Barbel being the target. The water's relatively low. It is still summer at the end of the day. But I'm looking forward to this. It's uh, about half past five now, something like that. The, uh, the sun's not up yet. It's mist in the fields, as you can see. I've been eyeballed for the last 10 minutes as I've been getting ready by this fella. <laughs> been giving me a right. Right, good eyeballing. Um, <laughs> it's literally not blinking. Fortunately, there's an electric fence between me and him, so that's fine. Now, today, it's going to be a bit of a roving day with the ledger rods, I think. That's the plan. I've got some float gear with me as well, but this stretch, well, as you can probably see, if I spin you around, there's a lot of sort of trees and bushes and stuff on the inside here. So it's not really ideal for trotting. But we may have a go later. We may have no a go, but I'm planning really on doing some ledgering. That being that, I'll quickly run through the gear. I've got my um, Daiwa Infinity Evo barbel rod, 12 foot, pound and three quarters. I'll do fine today. My GSBR LT 3000 reel there. I'll stick all the information of all the gear I'm using down below as normal. I've got my standard barbel running ledger rig on here. I'll link you up there to a video. You can go and have a look exactly how I tie this up. It's very adjustable. I do like it. Oh, he's chilled out now. <laughs> it's chilled back out. <laughs> yeah, it's very adjustable. So as I say, there's a link up there if you want to go and have a look. I'll put the links in the descriptions as well for those of you who don't have cards on your platform. And I'll be using my standard barbel hook links again. Another link up there if you want to go and have a look how I tie these up. Much easier to show you at home rather than on the bank. Anyway, we didn't get up at quarter to four this morning to sit here talking. Let's get down the river. We'll go through the baits and uh, hopefully catch some fish. Oh, it's a bit chilly this morning. I must admit. What I've come to is one of the decent swims on this stretch. Certainly with this amount of water on. This is where my no generally produces what we've got just to put you in a picture you can probably see over there in the distance on the other side of the river there's lots of riffles what that means is the deeper water's on this side and we're funneling down here into a bit of a gully down here so what we're going to do is fish that first off as I say it can be quite a good swim this time of year. And bait wise, what I've got with me, I've got the usual, I've got some halibut pellets. I've got some of the pellets I made myself from the Hot Fish GLM boilers. Again, I'll stick a link up there if you want to know how to make your own pellets, because they don't do pellets in that particular range. I've got a pot of, uh, one of these bags of, um, Dynamite shrimp krill grain bait with some added mixed pellets as well. What I'm going to use mainly, I think, is my glugged hot fish GLM boilies, which I absolutely love using. And I've got some paste I've made to wrap them up with, because they don't come with paste either. Again, I'll stick another link up there. You can go see how you make your own paste from the boilies if you want. We're just going to go on a two ounce, if I can find one two ounce Guru Gripper feeder. Simple as that. Looking forward to this. I don't fish this stretch that often. Maybe once a year. If the river's particularly floody, perhaps a couple of times, this is a good flood stretch. Good stretch to come when it's flooded. I think my plan today, get going a bit now. Looks like we've got a fairly clear sky. I think it might be quite sunny today. It's not supposed to be, but from the look of it, it's going to be quite sunny. So obviously that's not going to be ideal for barbel fishing. So I'm thinking early and late might be our best bet. Hence my keenness to get started now. So yeah, I think we'll have a go for perhaps an hour. And then we'll get about, perhaps bait a few swims, perhaps do a bit of roving, perhaps even do a bit of trotting, see what the day brings. 
It's one of those things, it's all right coming with a preconceived idea of what you're going to do, but it's not always great to be inflexible. Right. Well, it's just out too far down there. Just let that run down. Donk. Right, we're fishing. We're fishing and fairly under the rod tip. No need for rod tips up in the air or bows of line out or anything like that. I'm hoping we can uh, we can winkle a fish out of here fairly quickly. It's usually good for a bite. That's, as I say, it's kind of my thinking. Well, we're getting lots of rattles and bangs in here. But nothing uh, sort of barbly, if you like. I think we'll give it about half an hour. Just thought perhaps we might nick an early bite, which looks like we're not going to. I think it's probably time for a bit of a move. I think we'll have a move. Right, I think we we'll call it at that. There's um, clearly a gang of small chub down there. <laughs> that are uh, rattling away at this bait. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm going to put some some pellets in here then I'm going to go have a bit of a wander the stretch we're going to have a look at a few swims bait a few spots and then uh, we can perhaps fish them in rotation so guys being summer obviously you think that the, the faster water would probably be a better bet but bear in mind how cold it's been recently and how much rain we've had. I think perhaps the faster water, the water that'll hold more oxygen, is perhaps not as much of a draw to the fish as usual. So, go for a bit of a hunt around. What I found is a swim here. A bit of a snag over that side, overhanging tree that's fallen in the water. Same on this side, if we get out of the way you'll see. A nice crease in between, nice bit of water. So we'll put a bit of bait in here just on that crease line. For those of you sort of new to watercraft, the crease line is the, the bit between the slack water in here and the faster water out there. What I've got here is just an assortment of pellets, as you can see there. Everything from sort of three mils up to six mils. Different flavours, fish meal flavours, krill and shrimp and krill, sticky baits, the krill, halibut pellets, cheesy garlic halibut pellets. I'm just going to put a bit of that in there. As I say, just on that crease and out a little bit into the river. I'm not trying to put it in one spot particularly spreading it about a little bit just so we get the fish grubbing about that's the idea hunting about i've got a bit of hemp yeah which unfortunately is a little bit frozen still <laughs> but i'm sure it'll, it'll be fine you all know barbel well all fish love hemp most fish we get a bit of hemp in as well One more pouch full. Hopefully, one or all of these swims will come up trumps. Right, we'll have a go at a few swims like this. We'll bait a few up, and I'll, uh, I'll run you through why I'm baiting them, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll fish them in rotation. So, guys, this one, well. Fairly obvious. We've got a big, thick, overhanging tree there. We've got another one in the water here. Some slightly slacker water on the inside. I think worth putting a little bit of bait out on that crease over there. So 
So we've got a nice crease off this tree here, running out across the river. I think worth putting a bit in there. Good few years since I've been to this stretch when it's been this low. I tend to usually come here when it's quite high. It's a good high water stretch. I think I mentioned. So um, it's all a little bit of a voyage of discovery. I do remember fishing this swim in the winter. I think it was this one. It's quite snaggy in there. However, I think, I think, from what I remember, I had a barbell out of here. Right, I'm not going to go overboard with any bait in it, any particular swim. A few little pouchfuls of pellets and a couple of hemp and we'll let them settle. Looks nice that does that crease there. So, top swim on the stretch. Again, it's just a fairly steady bit of water. There's a little bit more pace to it, which tells me it's shallower. And as you can see from the surface, it's quite boily. And that tells me there's a lot of rocks down there. A lot of obstructions on the bottom. And I know from experience why Barbara love living in amongst boulders. So it's just jumped out above me there. So, I think it's worth a few patchfuls in here as well. A bit of hemp. Just to see. Give us another option and see whether anyone's, uh, anyone's at home. So, well, I'm going to bait up one more swim. A swim I've done alright in, in the past, when there's been a bit of water on. Again, not sure what it'd be like in these conditions. It looks to me, again, from the surface of the water, you can probably see out there, with a foam line right under our feet, which indicates the deepest bit of water. Over the other side, it's very boily from about a third of the way across. It's very boily, and that tells me it's shallower and rockier over there. So it looks like we've got a little bit of a gully at our feet in here. It doesn't look like it's been fished for a very long time now. <laughs> so we're going to have to make a swim if we get down there. Well, we've got plenty out to go at first. I'm not say if we if we fancy a go at this one, we can uh, we can break our way in and probably need to fix a bit of rope to this post as well. There was a bit of rope fixed here, I seem to remember last year, but it uh, doesn't look like it's there now. Or is it? I think I can see it. So that may, may make things a little bit easier. So we'll see if we can see the rope. I can. Just here. Right. <coughs> there is a rope. Fab. So we can get back out. Shimmy our way down. So yeah, we'll probably have a go at that swim. Especially as it doesn't look like it's been fished. So the fish are probably going to feel safe in there. Right, that sun's out, as you can see, so I'm going to strip off a bit because it's a bit warm. Right, yes, I like that one. <laughs> it's going to be fun in there, but uh, yeah, I like that one. So guys, first of the baited swims. It's probably out. At least 45 minutes, I should think, since we uh, baited it up. Plenty of time for the fish to get nuzzling around, if there's any about. And do exactly the same setup. Pace wrap boily. Love it, pace wrap boily in the summer. Generally, it goes really well. The fish are hungry. Mick's here now as well. All right, <laughs> some here. He's, uh, he's fishing in the peg that I started in. That's 
pretty much the bank a peg on this stretch. It's usually good for a bite. A bit of depth there. Right, Let's see if that brings anything. Some right rattles then. Thought something had uh, hooked itself. A few proper, proper clangs. Still very chubby. But, uh, well, perhaps it was a reasonable sized chub. Well, not a lot going on there. We had one proper clang. Aside from that, not much. So we'll get moved. I'm not going to hang about. We'll perhaps have 10, 15 minutes in each of these swims we've pre-baited. I'm sure at least one is going to produce. If it doesn't, then we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll take stock. So next up, I swim I, I do recall from last year. I was, I was throwing me, there was about another metre of water on, perhaps four foot. Well, I fished here last. I sat further up the bank. <laughs> this was all underwater here. But, um, yeah, it was, it was here. I did have a barbel out, I seem to remember, not a big one. But the way things are going at the moment, I'll be very happy with a modest marmal. <laughs> Just spoke to Mick. I'm, I'm sort of working my way upstream. Mick's working his way downstream. He's fished the uh, the swim I started in for, well, the last good hour. He says we get loads and loads of rattles and taps and bangs and he scaled down and scaled down and scaled down and still getting them and then eventually hooked a couple of sort of two and a half pound chub but I'm going to keep concentrating on the barbel for now sitting on my hands I'm sure to be honest with you the bites we're getting I'm sure most of these swims if I'd had a lump of lunch in the on I'd have caught chub in and we may well do that if the barbel really are not playing ball then perhaps we'll do that, but for now, certainly this morning, quite happy to, to fish for the barbel. Right, I'll swing this out just onto that crease line there. As I say, it's snaggy in here. From what I remember, and there was a lot more water on last time I fished here. Dunk. But, let's see what happens. off <laughs> well <Wow>. a few thumps <laughs> I don't think this is a chub well that was great I think you can see what's going on first proper bite of the day He's pulling back. <laughs> Trudging upstream as they do. <laughs> a 
under my feet. So I'm getting the net ready, but I don't think he's anywhere near ready yet. Cool, blimey, he's not a bad fish. Cool. I'll settle for that. <laughs> oh, that's some power. That's a, that's a cracker. Got him. <coughs> now we have him. <laughs> <laughs> Landing net <that> slipped. <laughs> the head slipped round. Ugh. Atrocious bit of netting. I thought we'd sneaked him into quickly. <laughs> He's soaking us now. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't really ready for the net that first time. <laughs> Still not ready. <laughs> God, he's off. I thought we'd just sneaked him in that first time, but he wasn't having any of it and the <laughs> net wasn't tight and it slipped. Slipped around and tipped him out. Come on. No, he's still not having it. They always do, don't they, Bob? <laughs> Come to the net and off again. Oh, he's a nice fish. Fair play. Like it. We're gonna get him in this time. We are. <laughs> well, he soaked me. <laughs> we'll give him a rest. He's a nice fish. Yeah, this net relies on friction <laughs> to pull it out, and I hadn't pulled it out far enough. As I just tried to lift the net, just twisted sideways. Oh dear. Never mind. He's in the net. Well, guys, there we go. Cracking fish. Just brought him up to the top of the bank it's a little bit easier to handle him up here he's had a good rest first before i've got him out but uh that's absolutely cracking cracking fish certainly nine pound i would say or thereabouts certainly <laughs> got a decent belly on him as well fantastic that's absolutely wonderful I'm over the moon with that it's been hard going so far but uh that's cracking what a lovely fish wonderful right Let's rest him up again and then we'll get him back. So as, as always, fish welfare is top of the list. Especially as the water, I've done the water temperature, it's not too bad, it's 18 degrees, so there should be plenty of oxygen in it. Obviously this is fairly oxygenated swim, it's fairly still in here. I've held him out, resting him out in the faster water there. And then just while I was sorting myself out, I've just pegged him out here. He's absolutely fine down there. I'm going to give him another rest out in the slightly faster water this water down below me is is moving it's not static at all i did give him a little way because I, I sort of <laughs> got him back in the net and i thought is is he bigger than i thought but no i was i was about right it's 8 12 so i thought he was about nine pound so i wasn't far off but we'll give him another good rest before we send him on his way. Always worth resting these fish. We'll give him another five or 10 minutes there. Just make sure he's fine. He's righting himself. Always worth, as I say, just giving him all the respect they're due. In fact, we'll double extend this now and we can get him out a bit further. Get him out into that faster flow out there. Just where there's some faster water. Morning. But he's uh, he's kicking and raring to go. All right. He's had a good rest out there. Yeah, he's raring to go.
get on. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I think it's worth sticking out of here for a bit longer, isn't it? Definitely. Fantastic. Just a bit of damaged line after that fish, so I'm just removing the damaged bit. Retying the main line. Well, hopefully, first of many. Come on, tip is wrapped right round. For some reason. Ah. Yeah, again, all this debris coming down, look. Weed coming down. I certainly think this river's on the rise a little bit. I've got terrible signal here, so I can't actually check the local gauge. I'm pretty sure it is. I say because of all the rain we had sort of night before last, which will just be just about to be making its way down here now. I don't think it's gonna come up too much though. It's not gonna ruin the fishing or anything. See so it's not that line straight away. As soon as I drink, cast that in. Yes. <laughs> lots and lots of weed starting to come down now. That immediately, a big lump of weed on the line. We just dropped off actually, just as I was getting out of the water. As soon as I cast that in, it wiped out straight away. Well, when I was back in the car yesterday, I chucked in my two and a quarter pound Tesco rod, just thinking, oh, I'm never going to need this, but I'll put it in just in case. <laughs> where we're going at the moment, where we're getting wiped out about every five minutes, because we need to put some big heavy feeders on and uh, use a bigger rod, <laughs> just to hold the bottom. As I say, I'm getting... Oh, five minutes out of a cast, if that, currently. And I'm only fishing on this crease here. <laughs> well, you see where I'm casting. I haven't even got that much line in the water to collect debris. There's a lot coming down at the moment. Right, time for a move, I think. I'll give it another hour in there to no avail. I'll just wind that into a snag, I just felt it go in. <laughs> there we go. So, uh, we'll have a move. Try with some of these other swims we baked up earlier. <laughs> so guys, remember the really, really overground swim that no one had fished? <laughs> We're in. <laughs> Well, I thought we might get a shower or two. We did say we might, to be fair. A few big black clouds around. In amongst the blue and the fluffy white. Right, I don't think we need to go far out yet. I'm just going to plop this out just on the edge of the flow over there. Just about there. <laughs> That's fine. Donk. Right, not fishing far out, I don't think we need a looper's line. Maybe just a little bit. Now, I wonder why there's a lot of wasps down here. I think there's a wasp's nest. <laughs> just down here. They seem to be going in and out down here. So I think. Perhaps we shouldn't stick around here too long. <laughs> I don't want to upset them. Yeah, there's a wasp nest in the bank down here. I thought there was a lot of it, a lot of wasps. Right, I think we'll um I think we'll leave them be. There's not a lot going on here anyway. Apart aside from the chubby rattles. 
Oh, I could rather get out of here. I'm like getting stung. So guys, back to where we started. <laughs> one proper, proper bite, one fish. And that's been it so far. The rod tip up a bit more, I think, as this uh, water's pushing through a bit more than it was. I think it's just come up. I still can't, get, still can't get a signal. It's a terrible signal here. I still can't get a signal, but uh, looking at the water, I'm sure we're we're at best part of a foot up on this morning. Let's see. We'll have another go in here. Taz done two barbel for Mick today. So no reason why it shouldn't do some more. It's, it is pretty much the, I was gonna say banker peg. It's not a banker peg, but it's it's probably the best peg on the stretch. Most reliable for a bite. And for those of you who uh, are out there thinking, why didn't he tell us where he is? Well, there's a few reasons really. Firstly, if I don't, tell you where I am you're more likely to go out and explore for yourself get out there and go and try a few stretches have a look on their website there's loads of information on their website to do with the stretches every single stretch if, you, if you've not seen the fishing passport website which is where you book the day tickets and every single stretch and there are lots dozens and dozens has its own page with a description. Let me just cast this in. Description of the beat. Rough location. They tell you what you what you're sort of likely to catch. They also have another page with photos of people's catches. We have another page where you can go and book online because all the booking is done online. And then they have another page where people fill in the catch report because um, it's mandatory when you fish on the Wynask to fill in a catch report. So you have to fill one in. You don't have to let it go public, but you do have to fill one in. So, you know, have a look around, have a look. You'll see where's fishing well, and where isn't. And as for my general videos that I film on club stretches, I don't give away where I am purely because, you know, I've got respect for the other anglers that fish there. And when you put stuff on YouTube and say where it is, it does tend to get hammered if you've been successful there. So those are the reasons really. You know, I'll give you lots and lots of information, all, all the help I can really with telling you how I go about things, showing you how I do things, bait, tackle, etc., etc. But really, you should go out there and explore, find your own spots, find your own swims, find your own little stretches. There we are, we're in. I think, yeah, we are. Well, what is it? The next question. <laughs> it's not pulling back too hard. It makes me think it's a chub. I'm trying to get in the edge, which also makes me think it's a chub. It's got in the edge, which really makes me think it's a chub. <laughs> it's a reasonable fish though, whatever it is. Got it, mate. It is a chub. First chub of the day. It does feel a good fish. I'm not sitting properly. Oh, he's not bad, is he? Got him. <laughs> Cracking. 
Well, guys, how about that? <laughs> Lovely long fish. Huge, huge length to it. Very empty. A lovely long fish. It's a great fish, that is. Wonderful. Right, we'll, we'll get him back. We'll, we'll rest him up for a minute in the edge here. And Mick's just been round to say he's got uh, he's got a barbel resting up in the net. He's in the swim, the first swim we pre-baited. He's gone into that swim. So, I'll fix that fella there. I'm going to have a look. There we are, guys. How's about that? It's a cracking fish, mate. Are you looking about five pounds? It's about five pounds in it, something like that. But yeah, a nice, uh, this is my third, I think. I've won about a pound, or one of the smallest barbel I've ever seen, and then won about six, and then this one, which is quite a nice fish actually, real good condition. I can't see any leeches or anything on it. The other one I had, unfortunately, had a chunk out of his tail from an otter, I think. And uh, this one's a lovely condition. Great. Crack in. Great. Right, let's get him back, haven't we? This is the summer. <laughs> so guys, let's get this fella back. Let's have a good rest in the net. Really, really long fish. I wish I had a tape measure. Measure the length of it. Right, time for a move, I think. I'll keep on our toes. I was getting a few more bites a bit further out there. A few rattles and taps. We're onto something here. Well, I think it's a big branch or something. What have we got? A bit of weed. Yeah, a bit further out. I was getting a few rattles on the cast out there, but I think really to fish out there effectively. I need a two and a quarter pound test of rod. So if we come back in here, I think I'm probably going to grab that so we're back in the uh, swim where we had the barbel so I'm going to give this another go as you can probably see it's a lot higher than it was I was sat here before I'll probably sit here again but the water was down there earlier it is now as you can see Right over this bit. I've changed my Evo barbel for my power mesh. This is my two and a quarter. We've gone from pound and three quarter rod that really in their faster swim just wasn't cutting it anymore. I've changed over to the two and a quarter. Everything is exactly the same, aside from, we've got the next size up real. This is a 5,000. And I put this on my slightly heavier rods, just because it's a bit bigger, so you just got a bit more cranking power. That's, that's the reason. Mick didn't have anything else in that swim he was in. He'd gone for wonder right down the bottom, down down to stream end it's a big slack area at the bottom downstream i mean he's not gone down there particularly to fish that he wants to fish out in the flow but it's just to try another area does seem to be today just dropping on fish right will the uh, <laughs> will the three ounce hold quite possibly not Pay out a bow along. See what happens. See, we may get away with a three in here purely because we've got a lot of slack water in front of us. So the line is going through less fast moving water in this swim. There we go. Blankly ways off. 
just had a little thump before it and uh, and suddenly <laughs> hooped over. Cool, blimey. Let's back that clutch off a bit. I'd like to have that clutch set okay. It's sort of reasonable even though I play it off the back wind as well. Well, it's coming in like a dog on a lead at the moment. A bit strange. <laughs> Doing absolutely nothing. I mean, literally nothing. It's still on there. We've got a snag. No, it's going the opposite way. It can't be a snag. I've got fish on. <laughs> Just seen it. It's not doing a lot at all. That's what the landing now probably this time. We're going to get it in without it knowing much about it. We are. <laughs> well. What a strange old non-fight that was. <laughs> Even though he didn't put up much of an account of himself, <laughs> we'll give him the rest anyway. <laughs> well guys, we'll have a quick look at this one. He didn't fight very hard in the water, but uh, he's been fighting in the landing net and he's uh, given me a bit of a beating on the bank as well. But uh, as I say, we'll have a quick look at him before we put him back. He's just chilled out for a minute. Fantastic. Nowhere near as big as that last one, perhaps five pound-ish, something like that. But, uh, I'm very happy with that. Fantastic. Right, let's get him back. So guys, he's had a good five minutes in that net. He's raring to go. So we should set him on his way. Got cracking. And I think something's telling me he's taking this swim, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so what I thought I'd try <laughs> just because I've got it left over from dinner is a bit of my sausage that I had at dinner it's a Polish sausage I get it from Tesco it's called Turunska absolutely fantastic really tasty sort of smoked sausage I've got a bit left I think we'll have a go with that it's the sort of thing that Bob will like <laughs> We'll give it perhaps another 20 minutes in here. I do think it's a day for catching a fish, moving on, catching a fish, moving on. We're going to try that really tight swim that we baited this morning. We had a, we had a fish in it earlier with that, a single knock. But there's probably two foot more water on than there was this morning. I think if it had gone down, it's come up like a, nearly a degree as well. It's 18.2. My God. Blimey, a bite on me dinner. <laughs> well, guys, we've got a bite on the, on the sausage. <laughs> Feels chubby-ish, but it's putting up a decent scrap. Well, can I catch a, a fish on me dinner leftovers? <laughs> God, it's rubbing a bit on something. Feels heavy if it's a chub, but it's not fighting that hard. If it's not. <laughs> oh. Barble. A barble on me dinner. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Trying to get in a net on his own. Got him. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> well guys, there we are. He's waving at you with his tail. <laughs> Another cracking Y barble. 
as I say, taking, <laughs> taking all my dinner leftovers. <laughs> Bit of Polish Turinska sausage. <laughs> it's uh, it's very tasty, and this fella certainly liked it. It's sort of like a smoky sausage, really smoked pork sausage. That's fantastic. Over the moon with that. It's not quite as big as the last one. Perhaps about four pound. This one. We'll give him four pound. Blimey, everything's trying to bite me today. Get off me. <laughs> right. Covered in green bottles. Let's get this fella back in their water. Get him rested up first and then uh, we'll get him back in. <laughs> well, I was just talking to Mick. You've probably heard as I had that bite. We were talking about uh, water temperature. I was just saying to him, I used to monitor the temperature near home on the Avon. I always found in summer a drop in temperature was good. And sort of after having done some research, so I discovered that the colder water has, has more oxygen in it. I think that, that certainly helps you get some bites. It's gone up, as I was saying today. I think there's probably less oxygen in the water. Perhaps fish are maybe congregating, perhaps in these swims, that are rattling through a bit. I think he's certainly ready to go now. Fab. Wonderful stuff. I think. I think that's long enough in there. Get out of that snag. Oh, yeah. There we go. I think boulder or something down there. I keep catching it. <laughs> right. The magic Tarunska worked once, but only once. <laughs> Right, let's go and try a few more spots. And I think perhaps we'll finish off in here. Right, worth another go in here, I think. We had to go this morning. <laughs> we had to go this morning without so much as a nibble. God, water's right there. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't even have a nibble this morning. I have caught barbel in the past in here, but only when the water's been fairly high. So really up to about here. <laughs> Another cut of foot on where it is now. I've had two or three in the past out of this swim. As I said earlier, I don't fish this stretch that much. Maybe once a year, twice at the very most. A very, very busy stretch. It's very popular. And I always like to I'll book last minute if I can. And I know the conditions. Well, I booked about a week or so ago for this, this trip, thinking the rains were over. And we sort of knew what we were going to be faced with, but... I say it did chuck it down one night two nights ago. And that's what all this is it's coming up here. Come on, that's a proper rattle. Alright. We're in. Oh, well, I thought this swim should have been good for a bite. <laughs> and I was just thinking of of knocking it and going down to the gully swim. And it's just rattled once. And I thought perhaps it was a chub. I don't think this is a chub. We're in some some fast old water here. <laughs> <Slightly>. <laughs> well, hopefully you saw you saw that bite. It's a proper proper thump. I don't do anything with this. At the moment. It's like it's snagged. It's not, but that's what it's what it's like. It's just there. It's just sitting just sitting in the in the, in the flow. Come on, get him 
Mary. There we go. Let's just tighten that clutch into her. God, blimey. God. Put some pressure on this fish. Determined to get down there to that willow. I think we've turned it though. God, look at the bend in that rod. And bearing in mind, it's a two and a quarter pound skirt rod. What a scrap. This keeps feeling like it's tonight. It's not. Old water bit there, isn't there? Blimey! It feels like heavy fish. I can't do anything with it. <laughs> it. Really is like it's snagged. Like I say, it's not because it keeps moving. It's off, look. Definitely not snagged up. Blimey. What a scrap. That was a good fish. Just sort of sitting there. Got half a snag with him. That's kind of what it feels like. God. Yeah. Oh, right. Feels it. A pro proper one as well. Can hardly move it. <laughs> it keeps taking line. Then give this rod a workout, and this is two and a quarter pound test curve. This rod <laughs> bottom now. <laughs> Almost feels like it's got a little snag around it or something. It's swift. Yeah, <laughs> oh my gosh, we're getting somewhere. Oh, I know it's off again. <laughs> Again, clutch off. Oh, blimey. <sighs> what a scrap. <laughs> oh. Have you seen it from up there? Does it look like a re... Does it? I, I can't really see it very well from down here. I'll get this ready, but no, it's not ready yet. <laughs> I think we're winning. <laughs> Give me an absolute beating. <laughs> Headed off down by that willow down there, yeah. and I just thought it was snagged solid. But then occasionally I'd just feel it move. Mm -hmm. I'd just bottom the rod out to get it to, to move, and, and it wasn't snagged at all. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, he's nowhere near as big as I thought he was. <laughs> Absolutely pulled my arm off. Me. That was a scrap and a half. <sighs> My arm is hanging off. Well, guys, there we are. Another cracking fish. Nowhere near as big as I thought he was. What a scrap. If I'd have lost this one, I'd have swore blind it was a double. But he's probably seven and a half pounds, something like that. <laughs> what a scrap. Absolutely epic. Well, as I keep saying, it is a summer, so we won't keep him out very long. He's had a good rest already. We'll get him back in the water, give him another rest and uh, get him back in. Well guys, it's about six o'clock now. So I think what I'm gonna do, we'll get this fella back. He's just about ready to go now. Got his nose in the mesh. Come on, off you go. There we go. I think we'll have half an hour in the swim where we've had those three barbel. I'm probably going to call it a day there, to be honest. A very, very enjoyable day. I did promise my daughter I'd get home before she went to bed when I phoned her earlier. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll have another half an hour, see if we can winkle another one out of that swim, and then we'll call it a day. Well, guys, that is it. I am done. I had a cracking day down here. I had some wonderful barbel and that clunking great chub as well. It's been really, really enjoyable. Nice to catch up with Mick. To, although as, as I think I said not seen him that much we've been uh, all over the place flying around we've not shared a swim or anything it's not really any swim suitable to share on this stretch but it's been a cracking day four wonderful barbel and that cracking chub so I can't complain about that and that last barbel the, the scrap off that last barbel I don't think I've ever pulled a fish that hard it just felt like it was snagged I mean I know we say that quite often with barbel but this one it was just just crazy in, in that, that fast water wow unbelievable just like to take this opportunity to say a big thank you to a couple of new channel patrons dean and daniel have signed up through patreon to support the channels thank you very much guys welcome on board and your support is greatly appreciated now i will be out again later on in the week closer to home i'll either be doing some small river stuff or i'll be out on the avon just depends if the avon has come up like this place has that'll be fantastic and colored up a little bit i'll definitely be down the avon Alternatively, as I say, we'll perhaps do a little bit of small river stuff. But for now, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and found it informative. Tight lines, enjoy your own angling. Many thanks to the channel patrons for your fantastic support. And I'll see you all again very soon.